All right, today I want to talk about how the college football playoff selection process is working and what are the criteria. Now let's come up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that that corner sh <laughs> What's up, Kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I'm not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. So it's OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I want to go through the protocol for figuring out who the four best teams are in the college football playoff selection and how they determine the rankings. And I want to be thorough about this, so I'm going to reference some notes here all along the way. I also want to encourage you to sign up for my newsletter for which I'm going to write about this in detail and give you free stuff when you sign up, also going to get free stuff in this newsletter. Just give me a Hotmail account. Give me whatever account it is you use to get coupons or whatever, because right now I'm just I'm really interested in seeing the stats grow. And I'm giving away a lamp, like the old school one for the folks that have been following the channel for a long time. And I'm going to give it away to one person who signs up between now and December 7th, or December 8th, excuse me, the Sunday following the conference championship for the Big 12 championship. And yeah. I like doing this kind of stuff. I like writing. I like giving people more stuff. I'm in the content making business. So let's talk about what the college football playoff selection committee is supposed to be working out. And I'm going to reference some notes to get us closer to it. So there are a couple of things that I want to point to. First is the criteria for which they are supposed to be using to come up with these things, right? And let's be very clear. Championships won matter, okay? Winning your conference championship matters. They're supposed to take that into account. So you would think that... Being the conference champion is going to outweigh almost anything else, but we have data to show. That's not always true. And then they're supposed to take a look at strength of schedule. Now, how they define strength of schedule is also interesting, right? We would expect Power 5 versus Power 5 to be in consideration, but also so is head-to-head -head matchups if they occurred, right? So Oklahoma playing Texas matters. LSU playing Alabama this weekend matters. Ohio State-Michigan matters. You can go on and on and on. This also should hurt Clemson along the way because they really haven't played anybody that anybody respects, whereas Ohio State has played FBS teams all the way through, and they've already beaten up on a Wisconsin team that a lot of people did respect, Michigan State team a lot of people did respect, and they'll have an opportunity to beat up on a Penn State team a lot of people respect right now as they're undefeated. The other one is comparative outcomes of common opponents. So if you beat up on Wisconsin and Wisconsin, let's say, got or went and beat Oklahoma, for matters of this concern, things that didn't happen, you would expect Ohio State to get the nod there because people think that Wisconsin was good and they would have beaten up on a good Oklahoma team. And we could say the same thing about, say, Kansas State if they managed to beat Texas, right? But Oklahoma already beat Texas. We can get into the weeds on this, but I want to keep it moving here so that everybody knows what we're dealing with. I also want to talk about the guys that are on this committee and when they're supposed to be uh, meeting Monday and Tuesday, the weeks prior, so they met Monday, yesterday, and Tuesday, today, to come out with the initial rankings, and they're going to do that all the way through Friday and through Sunday, December 6th through December 8th, to figure out who's going to play in the college football playoff selection playoff, right? So the people that are point persons are Ronnie Lott for the American and Gary Barta. We've also got Chris Howard and R.C. Slocum from the ACC. We've got Joe Castiglione and Ronnie Lott for the Big Ten. They're the spokesmen. We got uh, Scott Strickland and Ken Hatfield for the Big 12. We have Ray Odeniro, uh, excuse me, Ode Odierno, excuse me, and Joe Castiglione for Conference USA. These are the folks that are going to be point people for them along the way. Uh, Mount West, Mountain, the Mountain West. We have Ken Hatfield and Todd Stansbury. Mid, uh, the Mid American, we have Gary Barta and Paolo Boyvin. In the Pac 12, we have Todd Stansbury and Ray Odeniro. Oh dear, no. And in the Southeastern, we have Frank Beamer and Terry Mohaj. Mo, Mo, I'm sorry, Terry. Mohajir, I hope. So, uh, the Sun Belt, we got RC Slocum and Scott Strickland. And Independence, we have Paola and Terry again. Metrics. There will not be one metric to assist the committee. Rather, the committee will consider a variety of data and information. And then the pairings of the semifinalists, we already know about. But I wanted to get across those four major criteria for what they're supposed to be looking at and how we should be able to judge these rankings when they come out. And I think the committee in the past has not put enough emphasis on the top 25 overall and has put more emphasis on the top four and getting those right, even four through six. It matters that you didn't have Washington State in this thing near the end, right? That they're not inside the top eight. It matters that Army was not ranked inside the top 25 in the college football playoff poll because these things 
are also what you get to bring home in a sport where only one team can win a national championship, but a lot of teams can claim championships. It matters where you're ranked because we're going to judge this based on history and further on into the future. What did you do in that one year, right? Because we've had multiple national champions in this sport almost every year. And in the last couple of years, we've only had two teams that have managed to go undefeated and throughout a regular season. And man, Central Florida, right? In 2017, and of course, Clemson last year, you could talk about Central Florida last year, but they lost their bowl game to LSU. I just think that there should be more of a conversation about how do we include these teams with a loss and how do we also not exclude the teams that go undefeated in what we might call weaker conferences. There are 10 football subdivision conferences, but we only acknowledge five of them as being really good. And then we have to figure out what to do with Notre Dame. And nobody wants to include Notre Dame in this thing except people that are proponents of the Fighting Irish, especially since they only play 10 games, whereas most College football programs are playing at least 12, and they're also playing perhaps 13 to win a conference championship, and then up to 15 if you win a national championship. So it becomes exceedingly harder to win games the further on you go in the season, and when you're Notre Dame, you only play 10 games, and two of them are against Bowling Green in New Mexico. It's really difficult to take you seriously, all right? Even if you play USC, who's in a down year, and you play Michigan in a down year, you play Georgia in an up year— I don't really think that that should matter. And I think that playing a quasi-ACC schedule doesn't do the same because you still don't have to play Clemson in a conference championship game. And most of us believe, as we did for the de facto ACC championship last year, that you would get beat like you stole something. So I would love to see this thing get a little bit more notice. And I would also like to talk more about the criteria and whether or not the committee's following them. I really can't wait to hash this out. I'm excited about it. Sorry about the later upload, but I want to make sure that I included this. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.